Some objects just do not lend themselves well to keyframe animation. For example, fabric. If we have a piece of fabric, how do we rig that in order to be a cape and to be able to be crumpled up into a ball or even ripped? Like, that's really complicated. Um, another example would be water or um, fog. How would you rig fog? What is fog? It's not even an object. It's just particles floating in the air. So for these things, we have to use a different type of animation, and that's simulation or effects. So it's important to recognize that a character animator is a different position, a different job, than an effects animator. And creating rigs for characters or for objects is a different job than either of those two jobs as well. So each of these elements are areas where you could focus and pursue a career in animation. So let's look at some effects options, some of the things we can do with effects. If we go to this drop down menu and choose effects, you'll see that we have a completely different set of menu options. We're just going to look at a few of them today so we kind of understand what they are. We've already learned one of them, that was boss, where we could create ripples for water. If we needed flowing water, we would use Bifrost, but Bifrost is really complicated and we're not going to get into it in this class. Um, you'll notice some other things in here, like particles and cloth and even hair. So this is probably going to start giving you an idea of what the effects part of animation entails. So you'll notice that a lot of these menu items have the letter N in front of them. That N stands for nucleus. Nucleus is one of Maya's physics engines that allows us to create um, dynamic simulations. There's another physics engine called Bullet that also exists in Maya, but I haven't loaded the plugin right now. Right now, let's play around with a couple of the different nucleus options. Let's try some nucleus particles. So if I click on N particles, you'll see that I have the option to create a lot of different things. Um, you'll notice all the way at the bottom where it says legacy particles, this was the particle system that existed before Nucleus. So be careful and don't use any of these. We're going to use the ones up here at the top and in the middle. So under Emit, I'm going to click Create Emitter. Now you'll see that when I did that, we got a couple of things. We got an emitter. The emitter is the thing that creates particles. The N particle 1 is the collection of particles that are created by the emitter. And Nucleus 1 is this little N shape in the center of our screen that controls physics inside of Maya. Maya doesn't recognize physics as even existing until this Nucleus node exists. So if I hit play, you'll see that it starts to rain down little bitty tiny particles. Now, we can go to the attribute editor and start to alter how these different elements work. So, for one thing, right now our emitter or our nucleus, so for one thing, right now nucleus has gravity set to 9.8. If I set gravity to zero and hit play, they're just going to spit out into space. Now, 9.8 is actually technically correct. This is going to give us a very realistic simulation, but it's important to recognize that we have to model things and create things to a correct scale for this to work. You may have noticed in our breakfast scene that everything seems really small, and that is because if we didn't create the objects small, then Nucleus would seem to simulate as if it's enormous. Instead of these seeming like little tiny flecks of salt, they would move as if they were giant boulders falling from the sky. So, a couple of other things we can change are on the emitter. Currently, we have an Omni emitter. 
That means it's emitting particles in all directions at 100 particles a second. Now if I change this to something like 1,000 particles a second and hit play, you'll see that it's raining a lot more of them. If I added an additional zero, it gets even thicker. Now the thing to recognize is that Maya has to calculate the location of each of these particles. So, right now, if I go to my playback speed, we have it set to play every frame max real time. That means Maya is going to make sure that every frame plays and it's not going to play it any faster than real time. If I set it to play every frame free, it will play it too fast at first and then slow down over time as the scene gets more complicated because all of these particles are in here. If I set this to playback speed real time and I extended my timeline to something like a thousand, notice what happens. Maya is playing the animation at real time for as long as it can, but then when I hit stop, I get this warning and it says nucleus evaluation skipped, frame change too large. So when I have this set to playback in real time, Maya is not able to calculate the location of all of those points and play back the animation in real time. Since I've told it to prioritize real time, that means Maya is not calculating the location of these points accurately. So if I want an accurate simulation, and I do, I want to set this to play every frame max real time. This is a little confusing because when we're animating with keyframe animation, we want to make sure that our playback speed is real time. But when we're doing simulation, it's playback every frame. And that way, Maya makes sure to calculate every frame. To show you why this is important, I'm currently on frame 171. If I were to jump to frame 150, Maya is not going to know what to do with all these particles. And the reason for that is because it cannot instantaneously calculate everything that happened from 171 to 501. It can only tell what happens on 502 because it knows what happens on the frame before it. So if we skip a frame too large, it gives us this error. Now we're playing this back and getting it accurate. Now, you'll notice that the longer this plays, the slower our playback becomes. And that is because there are so many particles filling up this world. And they go on way down through there. So we can also choose to have some of these particles die over time if we would like. Under in particle 1, I can change the lifespan of these from live forever to a constant rate. So I could say to die after one second. And by die, it just means disappear after one second. So now if I hit play, you'll see after one second of existing, those particles start to die out. Maybe I want to choose a range of time. And I could say lifespan of one second, but a little bit of randomness of maybe 0.5 seconds. And so that means most of them will die out around the same time. The bigger I make this range, the softer that die out time will be. Now there's a lot of different things we can do with these particles, including change the way they render. If I go to shading, I can change this from points to multi streaks to blobby surfaces and even clouds. Now this is really nice looking in our viewport especially when we get some randomness down here on the bottom. However the problem with this is that Arnold will only render these as spheres. So if I were to put a sky dome light in here and render this scene, you're going to see that Arnold wants to render them as spheres. To get it to render in any other way it takes a couple of extra steps. We're going to talk about those a little bit later.